lived in Lanham made to a sick in the uttermost day. Call for the doctor, doctor say, what's feed a chair and I shot him brain? Mama lit me black shot and shot him, mama lit me black shot and brain. Mama lit me black shot and shot him, mama lit me black shot and brain. How's it going folks? Craig Budelman over here, uh, gonna teach you another old time fiddle tune. This one is, uh, it's called Shortening Bread. And while it's sort of known all over America and even around the world, uh, you don't hear it so much at the old time jams, but I encourage you to change that. I think it's a great tune. There's so many different ways you can play it. It's really helpful for learning a lot of techniques and uh, no matter how advanced you are, you can always have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you can sing it if you want or just play it as an instrumental. Uh, so I'll give you a, a little bit of how I play and then we'll, we'll start really simple and add in a few different things. So here goes shortening bread. encourage you with this tune um we'll go through it but i really try and listen to a lot of versions in general with old time tunes the more old versions you can find uh the more ideas you get in your head and really really hear what it can sound like uh so here we go we'll start out with edit without any of that fancy bowing stuff and just the basics of the tune um which is just going to be your third and first fingers there on the a string just kind of going up and down so it's So there you see, I often uh, will do a little down, down, up on that thing to get the bowing to work out and give you a little bit of a do, but, uh, so. Let's do that again. The second part is basically the same thing, just that first note is the low D instead of the high D, so it's a it's an open D string. So it's O one O one. Again, the down down up. If 
want to do it the, the real way, the tricky way, the last phrase of that second part actually starts from the high third finger. So the whole second part would be like this. together That's actually really good, even if you've been playing for a long time, to really just do that and focus on your right hand, on the, the wrist really being loose as you're doing all that bow crossing. I'm really making those changes over here with, with all of this stuff, and that's, that's really essential to old time fiddling. Uh, so make sure you're not moving your whole arm around, but try and really... See if you can do it without moving your arm at all. And if you uh, if you have trouble not moving your arm, you can wedge it into like a door frame so that this part of your arm can't move, but the door, you know, the side of the wall over here, and then get that way going. Uh, okay, so let's try and make it a little bit more more funky. Um, so the first thing that I would add would be a little bit anticipation, right? That first beat, if you start your arm mo moving before the actual beat comes, then you get already a little bit of a swing. Um, so one, two, three, four. So the bones are going to get a little wonky here, but let's not worry about that because we're going to work towards a building that works. So don't, don't worry if you're getting a little bit turned around. Um, so, uh, and again, to really feel that, you can uh, just play quarter notes. So, and I'll do that at the beginning of a lot of those phrases. Not too much, but it, but it really can happen quite a bit. Uh, so the second thing uh, to add in there would be the shuffle bowing, the famous shuffle bowing. Um, and there's a danger in doing too much shuffling or thinking of shuffling that just is something that happens all the time. But, uh, but old time is it's made up of short bows and long bows. And, uh, and a shuffle is just a combination of those two things. Um, so what am I talking about by that? I mean the um, sounds simple, right? So it's just long, short, short, long, short, short, long. Uh, but really take your time and work on that shuffle bowing quite a bit as you start, just to get the feel of what's happening. Uh, to me, there's two different basic kinds. There's the, the downbeat, really straight kind, and then there's the upbeat, swing kind. So that's with the emphasis on the downbeat, we get... Right, really driving and then... Really even. Then the swing is... accent is now on that first short beat 
And so if you're tapping your foot on the one and three, like you maybe ought to be, if you uh, believe in ought to be doing anything, uh, then the accent will be coming in between those taps. So you get uh, tap, accent, tap, accent. And uh, don't try and force the swing, right? You want, you want to get that feeling like, like you're a jazz drummer. But if you try and put it in the exact right place, it just won't be there. You got to relax and let it happen. Uh, so just put that accent on it and, um, and then slowly it'll start to feel better. Right, that first, the accent you want is just a little bit longer than the other short note. And I'm getting that accent by pushing down right in here. I'm kind of like leaning in, um, you know, like uh, it's sort of like the opposite of throwing a frisbee is going that way. It's like you're coming this way a little bit over. Uh, so. that happening all through my arm here although you can also think of it as just pushing on a button right there with your finger uh, but however you do it uh, just do it and yeah um... right so there's two ways to do that accent or to start to do this whole bowing um, there's what they call a circle bowing where you're really kind of moving in a bit of a circle with your hand, or there's a more straight thing you can do with your wrist. Um, and we'll put another video up with the whole explanation of that. Uh, but just kind of be conscious that um, either your arm is moving in a straight line here with the bow, or it's doing this shuffly thing. And either way, you want your hand to be moving up and down. Um, right, so it's really the hand is moving in relation to the wrist. Um, I find for both these things, it's also really helpful to turn my forearm a little bit in so that it's all facing towards the fiddle. And now if I do that up and down motion, instead of being up and down over here, it's actually going right with the bow, right in the way that I want it to. Um, so that's how I get those short bows nice and easy without too much effort. So let's combine that um, the shuffle bowing with the accent, uh, sorry, with the anticipation on the first beat. So you get a couple shuffles. Take time and get that feeling good at different tempos. And then you can try and do that with the melody. So that becomes. Let's start with just, just that first half of the phrase on the A string, just over and over again. Again. So now let's play that whole first half of the tune with that. And you notice in the end there, I'm not doing the shuffle, right? I'm still doing down, down, up.
that's starting to sound like old time music, right? Uh, with another big thing is to add in the droning, right? Playing two strings at once. So you do that and you're getting really, really close to the whole sound. on the end of the phrase either you can drone there with the high string or just play it on its own it's also great uh, on the low part because the melody is starting with that D string I, I would not drone the first note so you get that really clear give it a little bit of something extra, a little momentum, you can slide that fourth finger, or if you're playing in, uh, in D tuning in high bass, then it would be your third finger. Um, and so, right. So let's play the whole tune like that, with a little slower. Two, three, four. It's already that's a pretty good sound of fiddle tune, right? It's funky. You can hear with this song, it's really not like an Irish fiddle tune, right? It's not all this do 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 do. It's just a simple drony, shuffly thing. It's much more the African American influence in the fiddle tunes and the way of playing. Uh, although, if you listen to some of those string bands and there are some great recordings of them, I recommend you check it out. Like the uh, Black Banjo Songsters, North Carolina, I believe it is. CC Conway did a bunch of great research on that. Um, you'll see they do, yeah, a lot of this kind of shuffly stuff. It's not always exactly a shuffle, but it's these short and long boats, a lot of bows, a lot of syncopation, um, and just a way of, of making a simple phrase be, be funky and, and instead of, you know, playing a million notes. Uh, I think probably because it came from a fiddle playing that was, you know, on the African fiddles, there's only one or two strings generally. So you can't play a huge range of notes. You have to do a lot more with the rhythm and the few notes that you have. Um, well, let's keep going with this tune and add in a few more things. So yeah, ideally to me, you don't want to really just play a straight shuffle through the whole thing. That's perfectly fine to do and it sounds good, but you get more interesting stuff if you throw in some different syncopations and some groups of three notes and stuff. So what I mean by that is... So let's try and break that down into something a little bit more manageable. So, uh, like, uh, there's a good pattern for it. with the bowing there now I'm, I'm doing a couple slurs here uh, you don't have to do it exactly that way but that does work slur 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 so there's a little different ending 
So you could combine that with a bit of shuffling and get something like this. about these tunes that are uh, coming from songs is you get a lot of space to try to play it the way you want to and um, there's not just one right way I would say uh, I'll play that whole thing for you there and we'll, we'll see if that leaves you in a, a good place so One thing uh, that I didn't talk about there, but is actually worth thinking a little bit about if you haven't before, is the sliding. Um, sliding is, uh, you know, it's a big part of some old time styles, uh, and especially again the African American styles, um, and the sort of mixed thing that evolved after that. Um, and um, not to say that you don't do it in Irish fiddling, but anyways, um, an important thing to think about is just uh, you want to slide from below the note into the note. I think often people start sliding from the note and they end up sharp, um, which uh, doesn't really help anybody. Um, and as you're sliding also, you can start with not full pressure. That's another important thing to think about with your tone is if you're pressing really clearly and coming down with a firm attack, you'll get a nice clean sound. And if you press a little mushier, you'll get a little bit of a mushy sound, uh, which actually sometimes you want a mushy sound. You know, if you're playing blues or, or something like this, um, it can be nice to get a little bit of mush in there. Uh, whereas if you're playing a really classic square dance tune and you want it to be really cutting and clear, then, then you really don't want any mush. Um, the mush is the technical term. It's in the, uh, it's Italian for mash, I think. Is the, yeah. uh, but so, so what I'm doing is I'm starting, let's say with the third finger. I'm starting from below the note, about a C sharp, I would say and not fully pressing, and then it's like the momentum is going forward and down. So try that a few times. You'll notice if you push down right from the beginning, you're like really working hard and you're not doing yourself any favors. So, so make sure and don't start with the full pressure and start flat. Um, and do that with all fingers, the first finger. Second finger. Third finger. Fourth finger. Uh, and it's, yeah, especially with the second finger, you'll notice if you're gonna slide to a low second finger, that C natural, then you gotta really slide back and you know, squish your knuckles in there so you get almost to a B or a B flat even. And you can do that, yeah, by, by squishing the finger and then pushing it out. You can also just kind of cock your whole wrist back or your half your hand. Get some nice chicken sounds. Um, and there's two general kind of slides, right? There's just the quick and there's the slower one that goes into it, you know? So if you're playing short and bread, right? So that can be nice and fast. Those first ones can generally be like a, a fast slide. Right, uh, 
but sometimes you'll want to, you know, or on the beginning of the tune, or you know, when it comes around. Or, Then you can really jump on that anticipation and hear that C sharp before you slide. So that can be really useful, but sometimes, like, you know, you're playing quick. Good to have that fast one there too. Um, let me show you that last little lick I did there. Uh, all right, that's a nice one. We might as well break that down a little bit. So the notes without any of those slides. Again, that first bit. So it's just going up 301, 3103. That's a great kind of uh, a little lick, little phrase to take and try and find a lot of different bowings for it because you could do it so many ways and there's a lot of benefits to them all. Right, that's a nice sort of standard bowing to put in is da di ya da di ya da. Which when you get it fast, it swings really nice. So and then usually if I do that, then I'll put in some separate bowing after that. Separate slur. And then what really makes that phrase come alive is those slides. Slide up. There, it'll slide down. And I'm kind of in between an F sharp and an F, like a sort of half flat first finger. And there, I could either pull off again like that, or like slide down, or just a, yeah, and pull off. Right, so if you get a few of those different kind of phrases, you can really make these tunes come alive. Uh, let's show you one more thing with this tune, which would be a little bit more of like the notey version of it. Right, in my kind of understanding of these things, like you could achieve the same phrasing of the tune either with some of the right hand stuff and the shuffling and, and all of that, or you can do it in your left hand with, with extra fingers. So what I mean by that is, um, right, the way we were doing it before, <laughs> that or I could play like just one long bow and get it all in my left hand. Right and you can still dance to it just the same and eventually then you put it all together and you get a lot of possibilities for creativity. Uh, so Something, the good basic version of that would be. So slower.
course, you can shift those around. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, another one I love to do. time and throw in that. That's a little bit slower there. So all that together. together a bunch of these variations for you right now and uh, give you a feeling what it's like to mix that all up hmm. and if you listen to the playing especially like Ed Haley uh, Doc Roberts a few of those fiddlers um, you really hear this that it you can tell they have a few different variations worked out that they like and they put them together depending how they feel and that's a really nice way especially for these simpler tunes to make them come alive and, uh, and keep it interesting for yourself and the listeners, and uh, and also respond to the dancers if they're dancers or anything, whatever's happening. You know, the tune should be a living thing that's that's existing in relation to its moment. Uh, so, you know, if it's nice and simple and uh, chill, then you can do something really relaxed. And if everybody's getting excited, you throw in a few more tunes. You know, a few more notes, a few more licks, and um, and uh, yeah, keep it keep it living. So here goes uh, all of that together, short and bread. And the doctor say, want to feed them chairs and not short in bread. Mama, little baby loves short in short in. Mama, little baby loves short in bread. Mama, little baby loves short in short in. Mama, little baby loves short in bread. <laughs> 